Hello my friends, John LaRoofy here with another Straight Up Solo. And in this episode, we're gonna take a look at World Wonders. I'm gonna show you how this plays solo, give you a few turns, and let you know what I think about it. Let's get started. Okay, folks, and as usual, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And if you have, thank you so much for that support. I do really appreciate it. So, what do we got going on here? Well, this is kind of a polynomial builder, wonder builder, um, tile selection kind of game with some twists that we've seen a little bit before maybe, but they're brought up a little bit newer in this game. So what you've got going on is you have 10 rounds to basically get the most points you can by building up your little city-state here. And in doing so, you can build these monuments of all sorts of different types. You can build these buildings in the offer of different types. And you could use roads to kind of connect things and towers to spawn or to have like starting places of new roads that don't have to connect to this sidewalk here on the bottom. While you're doing that, the um, Automa player is going to flip a card and basically take away a resource, or, I'm sorry, a choice for you, either a building, a road, or the tower, or even sometimes these monuments, depending on what's available. And so I'm roughly about halfway through the game right now. It is a very quick game to play and very easy to... Uh, administer. So let me just go ahead and show you a couple things, but I'll tell you a few things also. You basically have seven gold to spend every round, and you can take a loan if you want to exceed that. You can spend that by buying different tiles from the market, by buying roads, by buying a tower, or you can basically spend all the gold you have left to get the monument that you want, and your turn is over. So this is an interesting part of the tension, okay? The monuments, let's take a look at the Colosseum here. They have specific requirements of what they must be adjacent to in order to be built. And they show you the spot where it is, plus they give you some kind of reward. This uh, ring is the symbol for victory points, and then this would be an, a move on the population track. So, right now, it just so happens that I have exactly the Colosseum's footprint that I need. I've got a road right here, I've got an H building, and I've got an M building, and this would fit right there. I could finish my round right now in the first turn. However, <clears throat> I wouldn't be maximizing my turn. So I'm going to want to delay that and try to build out, but I've got to be careful because if the AI can't select the first one or two actions, it will take a monument, the left one or the right one, and that could happen and immediately get me, um, you know, lose out on an opportunity. So for instance, in the beginning of the game, it was able to get this away from me which I was planning to build right here, okay? And so that's where some of the tension comes in. The other thing, of course, is the board placement. As you start to place things, you run out of space. And the more spaces that you run out of, the harder it is to, you know, put things into where it needs to be, etc. So the scoring aspect of this game is, like I said, at the very end, you count how many of those rings that you've acquired from monuments, from this population track, if you moved up, and by the way, I'm playing on the B side of the board, which has a river. The A side of the board has a lake. You get points for, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever your lowest of these three resource tracks would be. So in, for instance, right now, as it would stand, I would get four points for that. So you kind of want to be moving these up in a block. Um, and then you also will score for uh, natural resources that are shown on the board, but that must be touching something that you've built. So none of these are in play right now from a standpoint of scoring only this one and this one. <clears throat> and then finally, if you manage to completely surround all the sides of a specific building, you'll get one point for that. So you're trying to surround things. And right now, as it stands, none of my buildings are completely surrounded. But if I was able to put something right here on this last little spot that you can see there, that would at least surround that and would give me a point these surrounded monuments don't count. It's just the buildings themselves. Okay, so the AI always takes the first turn. They are going to flip over a card. Oh, and it's going to take both of the road sections right now. That's unfortunate because that makes it tough for me to be able to surround things, and I was going to actually buy a two-spot road to do that right now. So I can't do that in this turn. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, what I will do, though, However, is I'll spend two gold to buy this because I can place like-type buildings next to like-type buildings without them having to touch a road. 
and that immediately is completely surrounded also. So I'm happy about that. That'll give me one of these resources in the pottery spots. Now these resources, you're not spending. These are only tracked for victory points. And that also determines what the AI will score at the end. So now let's go back to him. What's he gonna do? <clears throat> well, he wants to take both the tower and the building I, I just selected here. As long as he can take one of those, he won't take this action down here. But boy, did I get lucky. Because had I taken a tower, he would have taken the Coliseum and that would have denied me the situation that I was hoping not to lose. So I'm kind of pushing my luck, like I said. So let's try to build uh, maybe like the fastest thing I can here in order to stop, I guess, pressing my luck is the best way I could look at it. So what I'll do is I'll spend three on this. Do I want to do that? Yeah, because I'd like to try to start to fill in and block some of these other things. So let's go spend three gold. Pick this up. And this tile then rewards me with the two bottom resources that I'm looking to move up the situation. All right. Now it's a shuffle. Uh-oh. So that's the last thing I want to see is a shuffle because that means he could potentially pull a card he's already pulled. And that would be dangerous. Okay, so he can't pull this one because it's already gone. So he moves to this next spot. He's going to take this and this. I am lucky. I've pushed my luck, I think, far enough. So I'm going to spend the rest of my gold. I'm going to take this Coliseum card, put it in my scoring area right here, build it. And then that immediately will be one point at the end of the game plus a population token right there. And then we draw another mo uh, monument out, and now I have that one in play. Now my turn is over, and as soon as my round is over, because I've spent all my gold or I can't build anything else, then this all resets. These get discarded. Get two new row tiles. We get another tower. And we pull all of these down here. One off the stack. So like I said, the game goes 10 turns. Or if you max out your population at that spot right there, the game will end and then you'll score. Now, how do you score? So I told you how I score. Okay, you sum up all those points. But then what the AI does is it takes the total number of resources in these three, adds them up, and that is the score you have to beat. If you're playing on hard mode, it will also add any of the points that it has scored by taking monuments away from you. All right, so that's basically what you've got going on here. The monuments have different types of requirements. Some of them, like this aqueduct, would have to go over the water. A lot of them have different um, there's some configurations. Like some of these have three spots. For instance, this one. If I wanted to build this, I can build it in a situation where it is, you know, three. This is not legal, by the way. But they have to be, you know, with a space in between them or something like that. Um, and so they show you in the card what to do and how to do it. But it's all, uh, you know, a puzzly, um, what am I trying to say, tiled placement type of game where there's some real good tension in what's happening with this AI deck. All right, so let me tell you what I think about it. So World Wonders, in my opinion, is almost better than it has a right to be in this day and age of gaming. And the reason I say that is because it's just fun to play, even though it is somewhat a basic game. There is not a ton of rules overhead by any means, or there, not, there are not a ton of rules overhead by any means. The AI is very simple to accomplish. It, it denies you those, those buildings just like a, a real player would. So in, in essence, it's like exactly what it would be like playing with other people. And it is fun, plain and simple, to look at your stuff in those 3D tiles and how they're built up. It just is a good, fun game. I like these kind of games. I've always liked tile games, right? And I don't understand why particularly. I couldn't put my finger on it. Maybe it's just fun to build stuff. Maybe it's fun to try to puzzle it out. Uh, but this one does not have you racking your brain over, oh, I don't have this resource or that resource. It's all just the gold. But you're trying to maximize as much as you can get out of each round without losing the big prize, right? And the big prize is the monument you're trying to set yourself up to build. And when you don't build that monument because the AI takes it on you, 
it can be very punitive, right? Because, oh, now my whole board configuration in that little spot is wasted. It's gone. So I've got to do something else. Now I was really lucky in my case that you saw there that the Coliseum popped up because that other one was, you know, taken away from me. And so I think if you like these types of games, you'll really have something fun to do here. And and also, I just think that the the actual pieces themselves are just fun to play with and fun to look at. And that's what gaming is all about to me, okay? So it's about having fun. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the most complex game or the most simple or light game or whatever. It just has to be enjoyable to play. And that's where I am with this one. So I see myself playing this a lot. Also, you can easily play a full game, including setup, in probably a half hour. You know, if you sort your tiles right and do things like that to put them back in the bag, um, you can kind of just kind of snap it up and go right through. And it doesn't even take that much of a table footprint when you're playing solo, so it's pretty easy to, to get it to any kind of table. So I just think there's a lot to like here. And I've heard they've, they've announced an expansion, so I'll definitely be checking that out when it comes out in the future. But either way, I'm very satisfied with this right now. And I think you would be too if you like these types of games. Now, if you don't really enjoy um, a more basic polyomial builder, and you want something with a lot more uh, considerations and different tile placements and this and that, or you like this inside a game but not the game, then you may want to pass on this. But for me, this hits a sweet spot that I really like and enjoy. And it is just the... Perfect balance of speed, um, rules, strategy, and tension. So thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it, everybody. And whatever you decide to do in the future, I really hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy.